y'all, I just wanted to put this little piece on the front end of this next video. I did forget to drill the holes where the wires go through the top of the chassis. And you can see these wire, these wire holes are, are even with the holes, the mounting holes. So we just need to drill a hole midway between these two holes in the same alignment right here on the chassis right here and here. And I've got this really neat little set of, of grommets I got off Amazon that's got a whole bunch of sizes. Super handy. Use them all the time. You really need to use something like this anytime wires are going through metal so it doesn't eventually rub through the insulation and short out. So we're going to measure the distance between these two holes. That's 42 millimeters. So between the two holes is going to be about 21. And again, this is one of those holes that is not super critical where it's at. Okay, and then you, you just kind of hold up the bit to the grommet like that. And you can, you can gauge it just kind of looking like that. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. Let me try it like this and see if you can see it better. There you go. You want to find a bit that's the same size as that center little rubber part. So we're going to put the big hole in the back and the little hole in the front. We want all the AC wiring back as far away from the rest of this as possible. So let me, uh, let me get drilling here. And as always, we start off with a small bit. Make sure it doesn't walk. And then drill this one in the back. Oh, tighten up the check a little. Make it a little bigger. Okay, and the, the front hole is getting a one, in, one quarter inch hole. And we're using two different size grommets because there's only two wires going through that hole and there's a bundle of wires going through this back hole. the back hole to this bigger size. And then we deeper these holes. Side two. And then I promise that's the last of the fab work. Now I'm going to tear off all this film, scuff down these chassis. And I'll show you what this nice black painted chassis looks like. Welcome back 
do a short video on doing the finish on the chassis. And one of the things I never liked about my previous preamplifier was that it was bare aluminum, polished on it some, but it didn't match the many other components, which were all powder coated black, which you've seen. And I wanted to have this one more closely match those other devices I have. So I decided to take a stab at painting this black and it turned out really nice. I wanted to simulate the powder coating finish, which is a little rough. And so I tried some of this Krylon, was this Krylon Fusion All-in-One. And it's a primer paint product that is textured black. And it turned out awesome. I mean, to me, it looks just like, see the, it's got the kind of the sheen with the texture on it. Um, I think it turned out real close to what powder coating will look like. Now I know it's not as durable as powder coating would be, but I didn't really feel like, you know, sending this off to get it powder coated. So I think this is going to work out just fine. Uh, there was a couple of holes that I forgot to drill that I'm going to show you now. One of them is we need the ground point for the ground of the power cord. And it, wants, it needs to be real close to this power jack. So we put, drilled a little one -eighth inch hole here. And grounding the chassis is very critical for the safety on these homemade products. We've got lethal, not just potentially lethal, there are lethal voltages inside these things. And the only thing that's protecting us from these lethal voltages, if a wire comes loose and falls up against the chassis, is that ground wire and that ground lug. And I've heard people online saying, Oh, grounding it to the power outlet. I had a hum, so I just disconnected that wire. Don't do that. I mean, you do, it's not worth dying over not having to hunt down the real source of the ground loop that's causing the hum. And just really don't skimp there. The other hole was I decided to put the power LED hole right here. I was going to put it by the switch, but I decided to put it up here. If we look at the power board, which is going to sit in here like, like this. Right here is the, where the LED solders into the board. And so I drilled a little hole here. I'm going to stand this up with a couple of pieces of that 18 gauge solid core wire. And then I'm going to get one of the standoffs and hold it up next to it and get the LED where it sticks up just above the standoff and then when I get ready to bolt the board up I'll stick this you know fish around until I get this LED poking up through the hole and then bolt the board up. It's also got a 33k resistor here that is the dropping resistor for this LED and this is what controls the brightness of it. We're probably going to put something more like a 68 K or a 80K or something like that because I don't want this light very bright. Just bright enough where you can see that it's on and that the, ampl the preamp's on so that you'll know to turn it off in case you accidentally leave it on. One of the important things to get a really nice finish like this is to do the surface prep correctly. First you want to get some 400 grit sandpaper and scuff it in this direction in one direction only and knock down all the high spots like around these edges and maybe around some of these holes we've punched that may have a little high spots left you'll be able to see the high spots when you're sanding it get the whole thing scuffed and do all every side including these bottom edges here then wash it off with some hot soapy water and then rinse it off really good Dry it off with a towel. Make sure you get any water that may be in these little cracks and stuff out. Then get some paper towels and some isopropyl alcohol. And even after I washed it with soapy water, the, I was getting this kind of stuff off the paper towel until I'd gone over it enough to where the towels finally came off clean 
with using isopropyl alcohol, then let that dry for a minute. Doesn't take long, the alcohol too will absorb any moisture that may still be on it. Then once you've got it like perfectly clean, I started by painting these flat, these flat things on the bottom and around, kind of rolling around the edge, doing maybe the bottom inch or so of the, on each side. And then let that dry for about 10 minutes till it's, you know, 10 or 15 minutes till you can almost dry to the touch or dry to the touch. And then set it on a piece of cardboard and then start painting it. And you want to do like this pattern, then the next coat, come back and do this direction. And then maybe do one diagonally this way and then maybe do one diagonally the other way and then finish up doing I finished up doing them in this direction and put as even a coats not super heavy but you want it wet don't dry spray it and then spray the you know at the same time you're spraying the sides and get them covered well but the, you want the top as even as you can because that's really what you're going to be seeing like ref the reflection off of and then after it, leave it about, I think I left about 15 minutes between coats for it to kind of skin, you know, tack over. So you're not like spraying wet over wet. Let it, let it dry, but not too long. Like it's depending on the weather that you're outside that you're painting in. I think it was about 75 degrees, maybe 80 degrees when I was painting. So I was waiting about 15 minutes between coats. And I put probably about six or seven coats on this and it turned out fantastic the last thing i did was i after it was dry you know semi dry to the touch i took the whole thing out in the front yard and let it sit out in the sun and bake and left it out there for probably about three hours and then kind of spun it around you don't want to do this like at night especially if it's humid outside because this black paint will they call it blushing it'll get like these weird white spots and stuff on it so you don't want to paint like at night or when it's really super humid you know if it is if you do live in a humid environment make sure you're doing it where you can put it out in the sun so it can bake any moisture that's gotten into the paint out as it's drying and you'll end up with a finish like this that looks to me, just like powder coating, and it should be really durable. That said, the paint's all ready to go. I went to the hardware store, I picked up all the little miscellaneous hardware, and I went ahead and like I told you, I replaced this silver bolt here with this black bolt, and I just think that looks so much better. And it's only a dollar or two to, to, to get a black oxide bolt and a washer and like a little nylon washer here. And so, you know, it's up to you. You may like the way that silver looks. I think it looks tacky. And so, got black bolts for that. I got some nice brass bolts with a thumb screw to, to do the ground up here on the front. So I got that. You probably can't see it, but there's the little thumb, the little thumb screw. I'll zoom in on that when we get when we're assembling this, and that's really it for now. I decided to go ahead and get all new parts for this power board too, since I'm going to this kind of extreme, trying to get this thing quiet and perfected. I figured, why put China diodes and Zener diodes and stuff on this board too, and so got all new parts for this they should be here tomorrow and again when I get done with this project I'm going to put together a bomb showing all the parts all the part numbers so you know on hindsight just go buy the bare board don't buy the kit I just I don't think those parts are worth using so thanks for watching if you like my channel please subscribe please like the video and I'll see you real soon for more tube preamplifier fun. Have a great day.